This chapter provides an introduction to demand and supply concepts. In part one, we will define and illustrate demand, explore the law of demand, and examine consumer behavior. In part two, we will define and illustrate supply, explore the law of supply, and examine producer behavior. In part three, we will study the concept of equilibrium and the effects of changes in dem demand and supply on equilibrium price and quantity. Then we will close with the government's impact on the economy when it institutes price floors and price ceilings. For this chapter, we have to make a few assumptions. First, the markets discussed are competitive, and there are large numbers of buyers and sellers acting independently. These models aren't accurate when you include imperfect competition, such as monopolies, or if the economy is a command system with a substantial amount of government interference. There are several types of local markets that are applicable to the discussion. Local markets include such markets as the farmer's market that brings together buyers and sellers of produce in the summer. National markets include markets like the U.S. real estate market and international markets like the New York Stock Exchange. It is through the interaction of independent buyers and sellers at these markets that price is discovered. To be part of the demand for a good, consumers have to be both willing and able to purchase the good. When creating demand, we are assuming that the only factor that causes consumers to buy more or less is the price of the good. We adopt the other things equal assumption that all other factors that influence the amount that consumers will buy remain unchanged. Individual demand measures the demand of one person, and market demand is created by summing multiple individuals' demand curves. The law of demand states that an inverse relationship exists between price and quantity demanded. As prices increase, the quantity demanded decreases. As prices decrease, the quantity demanded increases. The price causes the quantity demanded to change. And it's important to remember that it's not the other way around. There are several explanations for why this occurs. First, prices act as obstacles for buyers and keep them from being able to buy everything that they have ever wanted. So it makes sense that with a limited income, consumers will buy more at lower prices and be unwilling to buy more at higher prices. Remember that in order for a consumer to be counted in demand, that they have to be both willing and able. The second reason is caused by diminishing marginal utility. That is the decrease in added satisfaction that results as one consumes additional units of a good or service. For example, the second Big Mac yields less extra satisfaction or utility than the first. Since additional units yield less utility, the price has to be lower to make up for the less utility. This is sometimes why restaurants will run buy one get one half off specials to convince you to buy that second sandwich. The third reason is the income effect. A lower price increases the purchasing power of money income, enabling the consumer to buy more at a lower price or less at a higher price without having to reduce consumption of other goods. In other words, it makes the customer able to purchase more at the lower price. The final reason is called the substitution effect. When a goods price increases, it creates an incentive for the consumer to replace that product with a similar but cheaper alternative good. The simplest real-world example is the relatively cheaper off-brands compared to their name brand counterparts. One or more of these occur whenever there's a change in price and they further support the law of demand. To create a demand curve, we must first have a demand schedule. A demand schedule is simply a table showing the number of units demanded at various prices. Then we transfer the data on the table to the graph. Although the graphing rule in math is to have your independent variable on the x-axis, economists do what they want and always place money, which is the independent variable, on the y-axis when creating a demand curve. After plotting the points from the schedule and connecting them with a single line, the demand curve illustrates the inverse relationship between price and quantity. The negative slope indicates a lower quantity at a higher price, and a higher quantity at a lower price, reflecting the law of demand. In this example, there are three buyers in the market for corn, each with their own individual demand schedule. The market demand is the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves of all the consumers in the market. 
At a price of $3, for example, Joe demands 35, Jen demands 39, and Jay demands 26. But the three individual curves yield a total quantity demanded of 100 bushels. For credits, create an individual curve for J and a market curve and bring it to class tomorrow. A change in one or more of the determinants of demand causes a change in demand. In other words, when we begin to allow factors other than price to interfere, then the original curve is no longer accurate and is necessary to create a new demand curve entirely. An increase in demand is shown as a shift of the demand curve to the right, as from D1 to D2. A decrease in demand is shown as a shift of the demand curve to the left, as from D1 to D3. These changes in demand are to be distinguished from a change in quantity demanded, which is caused by a change in the price of the product, and is shown by a movement from one point to another on a fixed demand curve. A change in one or more of these will change demand and shift the demand curve. When most consumers experience the same change in taste for a particular good, the demand for the good will change. If there is a preferable change in taste, demand will increase. On the other hand, if there is an unfavorable change in taste, demand will fall. If there are more buyers in the market for a good, demand will increase, whereas when there are fewer buyers in the market for a good, demand will decrease. Normal goods are goods we buy more of as our income increases. Most of the goods that we buy are normal goods. We buy fewer normal goods when our income decreases. Inferior goods are goods we buy more of as our income decreases. We buy fewer inferior goods as our income increases. Complement goods are goods that we consume jointly. It isn't beneficial to have one without its complement. So when the price of one complement increases, the demand for the other complement decreases even if its price didn't change. When the price of one complement decreases, the demand for the other complement increases. Substitute goods are goods that we use in place of another. A perfect substitute is a good that we use in place of the other without any loss of satisfaction. If the price of one good increases, the demand for its substitute increases. And if the price of one good decreases, the demand for the other substitute decreases. If consumers expect the future price of a product to be higher, they increase their current demand for the product, so essentially to buy it before the price goes up. If consumers expect the future price of a product to be lower, they decrease their current demand for the product and wait for that price to drop. With income, if they expect a decrease in income, then they'll purchase less and save more, and if they expect an increase in income, they will purchase more and save less.